This is the monochrome VST full tutorial. I'm using a 256 monohm controller and I'm using Ableton Live which I'm going to run the monochrome inside of. First I'm going to select the monochrome 256 plugin and drag it to a new MIDI track. You can see the plugin opens here and we can see a representation of this uh, 256 monohm pads. Uh, the default patch that opens up has every single pad assigned to a sequencer. Uh, furthermore, every single pad has the corresponding step enabled of that pad. For instance, pad number four will have step number four enabled. Uh, however, of course, you can draw and change as there is an independent step sequencer for every single pad, if you so choose. There's other presets as well that you can select. I'm going to go into the preset list, and you can see that here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different note options. I've added a bunch of note grid options, and what these do is transpose relatively on every square. Um, so you see two different numbers, one for the X and one for the Y transposition. Um, and then there's a few different sequence presets as well. Uh, but I find monochrome most useful for the sequencing aspect, um, although the notes are really handy as it's a pain otherwise to do the different note mappings. Uh, but first I'm going to show off the sequencing. Uh, so let's just use this default patch as it comes up, and now we need something to route monochrome to as it generates MIDI notes. So now I'm going to move it aside for a second and grab an Ableton impulse device and drag that onto a new track and we are going to monitor in and accept MIDI from monochrome so I select monochrome's track and then I select monochrome and you want the monitoring in so you'll hear it and now we're ready to hit play in the host and bring monochrome back into the picture here so you can see it's cycling around now synced to the tempo of the host Every single row in this default preset has the same MIDI note. Once again, that's fully assignable. You can click on the pad, and you see the pad settings in this gray rectangle here. Uh, but I'm going to just use these default as they actually map to the MIDI notes of the Ableton Impulse. So here I have my very last row of the Impulse, and then go down 8, and I have the very first one. That's 7, there's 8. So I could build a whole pattern this way. Now what I've done once the truck goes by, is switched patterns. So now I'm on pattern two as I held the pattern button, and then I pressed the second button over here. So now we hear everything's gone away. If I switch back to pattern one, you'll see it's back. So one thing that you can do is actually duplicate patterns. I had forgotten the hotkey there, but it's actually a shift click and paste. And what that will do is duplicate your pattern one to pattern two. So now we have two versions of the same thing. And I could make a variation now here on the buttons.
Doesn't sound very good, but that's an example of switching between some different patterns. Uh, there's other functions here, so the pattern switching is this bottom right corner. Next one over is solo. It'll flash the row indicating any soloed rows. That way if you've let go of it and you come to it, you can easily see what you need to unsolo. swing you need to use the top row on it. 